Well, warm welcome, uh, Jean, because uh, it's lovely to have you here. You come with such extensive uh, experience, and it's not just in India. You, of course, are French, but you have extensive uh, experience across in Eastern Europe. You've worked in Taiwan, then you've been in Korea, you've been in India for the last one year. So uh, it's interesting because you are a person who is ushered in, and you've been in the news for that as well, a 200 million euro investment in India over the next 10 years. Why is India such an attractive investment hub for you? Well, hello, Megan. Hello, everyone. And uh, let me say I'm very honored to be uh, here with such a great lineup. And hopefully, uh, with our fun industry, I can bring a bit of uh, conviviality uh, uh, today. And uh, as we like uh, to say, uh, we always work in uh, unlocking the magic of human connections. So, um, India. India is a massive opportunity for uh, Panerica. There's no doubt uh, about that. I just have to uh, choose a few numbers. Our industry is going to grow to $64 billion in the next five years. So it's very sizable, that's uh, uh, for sure. And uh, if you look at uh, further uh, than that, uh, the tailwinds uh, are, are many. We uh, have the demographic dividend in, uh, in India, which is uh, obvious. India is a uh, young country, actually uh, a decade uh, younger, more or less, uh, than uh, US or uh, uh, China. It's very dynamic. And for our industry, it means that uh, we have every year 25 million new uh, potential consumers uh, which are reaching the uh, legal drinking age. That's a, a massive tailwind. Um, you can look at it from the angle of uh, growth as well. And uh, uh, obviously, the economic development of India is massive very favorable to one thing that Panerica really bets on, which is premiumization. And when we see consumer having more purchasing power, they definitely uh, can go to higher quality spirits. And uh, uh, we see that as a big benefit, and, uh, which is a strategy we have applied across uh, the world, and uh, India is no, uh, no exception. Then for us, the investment that uh, uh, you mentioned is uh, a natural consequence of our 30 years uh, of presence uh, uh, in India. We've been uh, here since 1993, and uh, uh, we see uh, this 200 million uh, euro investment as uh, uh, doubling up of uh, our presence, our commitment to the make and innovate in India, which uh, uh, we have applied since uh, uh, the very early days of uh, Panerica in India, actually Sigram India at uh, uh, that time. And uh, this is, uh, for us, the way to build uh, the, one of the largest uh, malt distillery uh, in uh, uh, Asia, which will be in uh, Nagpur, in Maharashtra, and uh, diversify our offer to the discerning consumers uh, in India. We really want to bring more and more uh, even luxury products to the uh, Indian consumer who are really ready for that. And it's very interesting because one of the cornerstone uh, for Perno Ricard is going to be Glocal global and local, and I believe already you have um, 95 to 96 percent of your manufacturing which is already happening. In India, you have uh, 24 facilities, you have innovation centers which have come up. How do you take this vision forward, and what really is the essence of global? Well, yes, innovation is super important for us and uh, has been uh, at the heart of our uh, business model uh, for forever. Uh, we operate, as you say, with 24 uh, uh, manufacturing uh, sites uh, uh, here in India. And uh, this is something that really helps us uh, continuously uh, innovate. Um, I'm not sure uh, I could not name all the innovation we have been uh, uh, doing, but uh, more, one of the most recent ones uh, is our Longitude 77, an Indian single malt. We uh, were not the first to launch an Indian single malt, but uh, we tried to elevate the category. We uh, uh, launched at... Uh, price point, which is the highest in the, in the category, uh, at parity with uh, uh, some of uh, our uh, uh, Scotch single malt. So uh, we are very, very proud to bring a quality uh, product to India with the pride that the consumer can have with this uh, uh, product. So that's one uh, example. Other example would be uh, diversifying the offer. Uh, we launched uh, more or less two years ago uh, Oak Glow, which is uh, a local produce brand again, which... Uh, uh, is more on the PT smoky uh, side of uh, taste, so uh, we cater to new uh, consumption patterns in, uh, uh, in the country, um, and uh, 
the consumer becomes more and more knowledgeable, wants to explore a different repertoire, so we are there. But we could name uh, many other innovations uh, in the production uh, uh, front, uh, like uh, the fact that we were the first uh, to uh, put anti-refill cap on our bottle to fight against counterfeiting, or uh, uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, we have been uh, um, also uh, uh, looking into removing uh, the outer box, outer carton of uh, uh, our uh, bottles to uh, really uh, make an impact on environment and uh, lighten the carbon footprint of our business. We'll just uh, circle back to the environmental and sustainability access. But you talked about uh, bringing in variety in the products, the EIPs that you've been offering. What about those who, let's say, don't drink? Well, that's also something that uh, uh, we monitor, and uh, uh, there is uh, an offer for that. Well, for uh, people who choose not to drink, uh, that, that their choice, and uh, uh, of course uh, we are uh, here to primarily cater uh, the needs of the, the one who chooses to drink, but we develop more and more an offer of uh, non-alcoholic uh, uh, products. We have uh, with Jacob's Creek, uh, Jacob's Creek and Vine, that uh, we have uh, uh, brought to this country, so it's a non-alcoholic uh, wine. That uh, is uh, excellent, and if you have the chance uh, to try it, uh, you will understand what I mean. Uh, and, uh, Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, worldwide, uh, we, we do have also a, game, uh, um, uh, um, a range of uh, non-alcoholic uh, uh, gene, non-alcoholic uh, other uh, product, so, uh, which we are observing and we might uh, bring to uh, uh, India next. And of course, today's theme is uh, Unstoppable India. As you can see, this is Times Now's uh, summit theme as well, which is why it's important for us to understand which is your biggest market. It's not India so far, but then a few days back, you made an interesting statement that US may be your biggest market, but India may just be overtaking US. Do we see that happening soon? Well, I see that happening. I cannot commit on the timeline, uh, but no, that's, that's a natural consequence. Uh, last year, actually, uh, India uh, for Panerica overtook uh, uh, China, and we are now the second market uh, worldwide by uh, net sales. Uh, that's a, a significant uh, achievement. And when you look at the tailwind, as well, I was mentioning uh, uh, before, the growth we're going to experience uh, in India will be massive, and we will over overtake uh, uh, the U.S., um, I wish the later possible. It's probably because my colleagues in the U.S. will do a great job and will continue to grow uh, fast, which will be beneficial for, for the group. But it will happen eventually. Uh, What's the, the difference right now between the India market and the U.S. market? Which is what, sorry? Between the Indian market yeah. and the U.S. market, consumption-wise, what is going to be the difference currently as we stand? Um, the U.S. is the biggest uh, market worldwide for uh, the spirits, and the repertoire that is consumed there is much larger. So this is actually a big opportunity for uh, India because you can expect that in the future years, uh, India and Indian consumer will become more and more discerning with also the increasing uh, purchasing power that will come uh, into the pockets of the uh, Indian with the great uh, job that is done to develop the economy. Uh, they will elevate their consumption, premiumization, and consumers are expected to explore more and more categories. So uh, uh, if you look back, uh, probably... Whiskey, rum were really dominating uh, the market. You can expect a lot of other categories to come into play in the next uh, uh, years. So that's going to be an interesting one. But to ramp up any business, any sector, it's important to bring in technology. So what has been the digital transformation that we've seen, not just in uh, Perno Record, but also in your industry? How do we ramp it up with technology? It, it's extremely important and relevant for any uh, uh, business, so we are no exception. We really, really look at technology uh, in many fronts, back office, front office. So we, have, uh, we are the first company to have an end-to-end -end logistic, which is totally digitized. Uh, so it helps us being more efficient and, uh, uh, well, in the production, but also reducing the carbon footprint which is extremely uh, important and part of our uh, commitment. We are also using technology uh, in the front office. So we empower our uh, sales force with uh, a tool we call DSTAR, which actually is based on uh, AI and which helps uh, the sales force make decisions in the uh, retail when they visit. So AI is capable of uh, managing so many parameters that the human brain cannot. So we empower the sales force so that they are focusing on uh, the human relationship and the human touch in uh, selling the products, and uh, the AI uh, is doing the brain work. 
Well, it's interesting that AI is helping in your sector as well to such a great extent. But you mentioned uh, trying to reduce your carbon footprint. How have you been doing that? Well, so far so good, but our ambition is uh, uh, higher. We want to uh, uh, drive a, a reduction of uh, our uh, carbon footprint per uh, unit by one third uh, in, the next, uh, uh, in the next years. That's really something we are committed to. And if we talk about this uh, sustainability uh, uh, angle, um, we really have many, many uh, uh, um, activation, uh, activities around, the, uh, around that, uh, directly from Panel Ricard, or India, or through our uh, foundation, Panel Ricard India uh, Foundation. Um, maybe uh, two uh, uh, that I can name uh, uh, under our water, agriculture, and uh, livelihood uh, uh, program. Uh, we are in operation a water-positive company. We replenish more water than uh, uh, what we uh, consume, actually, 1.2 times. Uh, that's something we are very proud of because uh, uh, it's, we know, a problem that will grow. So uh, it's important for us to participate to the solution. And uh, we are also working uh, uh, very closely with uh, farmers, farmers uh, whom we help to uh, get more uh, regenerative and restorative uh, type of uh, uh, practices in their day-to-day uh, -day job. So uh, uh, more than 10,000 farmers benefit from uh, uh, our uh, uh, advices and support uh, there. So that's very interesting because that's where a lot of revenue is also being generated because there is creation of employment. Now you have this uh, uh, grain to glass. I believe that's what Pino Record really believes in, grain to grass. Can you explain that in the context of how it is also going to help generate revenue, not just in the urban centers, but especially in the rural sectors as well? Yes, it does. And uh, um, I like it that we look at the global scope of uh, uh, what uh, uh, we are doing. So if I take the in investment we were discussing uh, that we will make in uh, Nagpur, these uh, new big malt distilleries, there will be direct uh, employment up to uh, 700 or 800 uh, uh, jobs that uh, are created directly. But the impact will go much uh, uh, bigger than that. Uh, all the uh, uh, ancillary services we will benefit. We will need to source grain to uh, uh, produce uh, 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 well, malt, uh, uh, to produce our malt whiskey. And uh, uh, this is something where a local uh, industry can benefit. Local farmers can uh, uh, develop uh, uh, the uh, culture, and uh, uh, this would be very beneficial for them. You could imagine uh, that uh, cask could start being produced. We need cask to age uh, the whiskey. So cask could be produced uh, in India, and uh, uh, that would be beneficial to uh, the local economy. So we are looking at how our investment can generate uh, this rippling effect so that uh, it's on not only our direct investment that uh, is benefiting, but an overall ecosystem that is uh, generated. You mentioned about the demographic dividend of India. One of the biggest challenges in the coming days is not just about learning, unlearning, but skilling and upskilling, that is something that everyone has been looking towards, including the government, of course. Skill India is one of the most ambitious projects which has been launched as well. How is uh, your company, and also as a sector, how are you going to ensure that you are providing these skills to so far, perhaps, untrained? And how are you going to be creating this pool of people? We are acting, I think, at two uh, levels. Uh, one is internally, of course, and uh, when we have uh, uh, our own people, it's, uh, it's a never-ending journey. So uh, training, uh, everyone, we are all a student for life, so we need to learn new things all the time. So we have all this uh, internal training, training on the job, training through uh, international programs, local programs, leveraging, again, uh, online courses when we need, physical session when necessary. So uh, that's uh, very active, and we invest uh, a lot on our employees, which are uh, the, the people who we need to drive the business. So that's uh, uh, obvious. And we go beyond that because through uh, our foundation, we also invest into uh, education uh, programs, again, to uh, educate a larger uh, workforce. And uh, uh, this is something we are very proud of, uh, which can benefit to us directly or indirectly. When I say uh, directly, it could be also to upskill local population that we need on our bottling plant and uh, teaching them the good practices on how to be more efficient uh, uh, there. So it's uh, something we look at many front and across the line. And also this one has to come in because there are two ways when it comes to entrepreneurship in India. There are those who said that this is the destination. This is where you need to be to make in India. Then there are the others who have said it's not a bed of roses. 
that there are challenges. Blue tapeism, red tapeism, that's one of the biggest challenges many have talked about. Several other issues have come up in the past. Where do you stand when it comes to this divide and why? Well, I definitely stand with the people who say that India is a huge opportunity and is unstoppable. That's uh, uh, for sure. My mind is clear on that. Um, so we got the right theme for sure. We have the right team, we have the right positioning. We've been again in the country for 30 years. So I think our position as a leader really helps us to benefit fully from the opportunities uh, uh, in India. Well, is there any challenge? Yes, there are, obviously. Uh, and we are uh, working on them. Um, getting in particular in our industry, uh, it's a very complex market that is uh, dealt with state by state. So. The ease of doing business that we want to uh, uh, see coming, we are partnering with the authorities to try and uh, uh, bring more and more of this uh, ease of uh, doing business. Two uh, example on that, uh, one, for instance, is getting a bit more leeway in reasonable price increase. We are facing, like uh, all businesses, inflation, and uh, uh, we need to uh, compensate this inflation uh, through a, a price uh, increase. That's uh, extremely important. And then uh, on the taxation, we are very proud. We, we pay significant taxes, and we are very proud to contribute this way uh, to the nation. But looking at uh, more reasonable taxation, in particular of the upper end uh, of the spectrum, could help uh, actually bring a more win-win-win uh, situation. Again, premiumizing the consumption of uh, spirits uh, in India, leading to uh, a consumer drinking less but drinking better, and at the end of the day, bringing more revenue also for uh, uh, the exchequer. Now, you've been here in India for what, about a year now? And I believe you're Gurgaon based? Yes, I'm based in Gurgaon, but traveling extensively in the country as, uh, as I should. <laughs> That's great. What are the kind of patterns that you have seen? What are the challenges you've seen? And also, where do you think India's headed? Because you've been here, but you've traveled in several of the areas, including some of the rural areas, the IT hub. You've been to manufacturing hubs, the financial capital. What are the larger trends that you see here? Well, the, um, it's definitely uh, uh, um, a country that has massive potential and uh, uh, which uh, still needs to continue to develop. When you are in Delhi, Gogaon, Mumbai, you could be anywhere in the world. It's uh, modern cities and uh, uh, you really uh, are in uh, modern India. You have all this rural India that needs to continue to uh, uh, develop. Uh, again, we participate into that because uh, we have uh, these 24 uh, uh, sites, uh, manufacturing sites that uh, we have uh, uh, nationwide and which are uh, uh, very often in uh, rural uh, India. We are very happy that uh, the money we bring there uh, helps developing infrastructures, helps, uh, again, upskilling uh, people. And this is a massive opportunity for uh, all industries because the elevation uh, we will see in the revenue per capita will be even faster in this part of India than uh, in the more developed one. And how important is it for you to create consumer awareness, especially in your market? Because when we talk about malls, the understanding so far in India may be a bit, well, limited more than what, would you, uh, what you would have expected. But the fact that now you've signed an MOU, which you had just mentioned with the Maharashtra government, you're setting up the, perhaps one of the largest single mall distilleries in not just India, but in Asia. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? And how do you put that message across? It means... Indian consumers are already discerning, and we expect them to become more and more uh, discerning. Um, whiskey is a big category in the, in the country, and uh, Indian knows, uh, know about whiskey, for sure. Uh, it's our role to continue to educate them, to elevate their consumption, to offer uh, a larger uh, repertoire. But we are starting from uh, an excellent uh, base. Um, there is also this... Uh, uh, craftsmanship and uh, uh, element of luxury that becomes uh, uh, even more and more sought after by uh, 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 the discerning uh, uh, Indian consumer, together with the pride to consume local products. That's something that is very natural and uh, uh, which will continue to grow. Uh, Indians are proud of their country and they are right to be. Has the consumer base, and this is something I must ask as a woman, has the consumer base amongst women now also increased? What are the trends there? Yes, uh, it's uh, increasing. Uh, the acceptance of uh, alcohol is growing in uh, society of moderate consumption, and we are in all... In whiskey? 
In whiskey, yes, of course, in whiskey, in all categories, we are uh, big supporters of moderate consumption, responsible consumption. That's uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, inheritant to our business. We really want to push for that. And uh, uh, we see uh, a growing uh, consumption of uh, uh, female drinkers uh, with probably uh, even more discerning taste uh, than their male counterparts, uh, on average, uh, I would say. And this is uh, an evolution that we, we welcome. We have seen that emerging before COVID. I would say that uh, COVID has probably accelerated uh, this uh, uh, pace, and we are uh, welcoming all consumers uh, who want to uh, uh, consume responsibly. Uh, as you just heard, uh, the Honorable Minister a short while back, uh, Mr. Piyush Goyal, he had said that you must do more, you must achieve more, you must aspire more. You should never be satisfied. Are you at that level right now, at the stage right now, that you're not going to be satisfied? What next? I fully agree. Uh, we will never be satisfied, and uh, especially facing the, the, the great opportunities we have. So we are already the second in India, the second biggest business for uh, uh, Panerica. We definitely, with my team, we want to be the first, and we will work uh, on that. We have planned to uh, triple our net sales over the next decade, so uh, we are very ambitious. And uh, we believe that we can uh, achieve that. That's uh, really the type of uh, fast growth that we want to uh, achieve. So fully agree. Never be satisfied. Go for the higher mountain that is next to the one you just crossed. Well, you've been here for 30 years. That's a long time to be in, in India. There are several other players because... Somehow it seems that you have been one of the pioneers, not other, not too many other brands, international players have entered. But they are eyeing India now as the next big investment hub. What would you like to share with them? If they were to come to you for advice, what would you say to them? It's an interesting question and actually with my uh, hat of the, as the president of uh, Indo-French Chamber of Commerce, I, I get this question sometime from... Uh, different uh, uh, people. What do you tell them? I'm uh, sure a lot of people must be asking you. About. Yes, there are. Um, I hope uh, I have a bit of uh, wise advice I can, I can share. Now, looking at what made our success, first I would say in India, it's very important to create shared value. So, uh, of course, companies want to uh, uh, make profit, but we must look at India as a country where we create shared value. Uh, and that's the first uh, mindset that all the uh, companies coming here need uh, uh, to have. The, the second element is to look at India is one nation, but the market is complex and diverse. So uh, it's very important to uh, uh, really focus at first on where you want to be, target the consumers that, that uh, you want to attract, and it's not the same in North India, South India, West, West or East India. So a bit of focus to start with is important. Then innovation will uh, bring the possibility to uh, uh, expand. So starting from a strong base where uh, uh, any company can uh, start attracting a type of consumer, enlarging the business will come through innovation and uh, uh, catering through innovation the uh, uh, taste, uh, the different appetites of the different consumers throughout India. How important is it to innovate in the same country that you are going to be manufacturing in? You already said India is the second biggest market for you, but you have innovation centers in India. It's important for us to understand, and I ask you this question because it will be a lesson for the other foreign brands as well. Many of them who may be innovating abroad, but if they want to push their product, how important is it to innovate in India? The strong base we have always had of local manufacturing has been the pillar of our success. So being able to understand Indian consumer, to be innovating with local product has been the base of uh, uh, our success. So yes, it is extremely important to have this understanding of the consumer, the consumer insight, and uh, uh, bring at a fast pace the innovation that uh, uh, will make uh, a success. So yes, when uh, any company wants to look at India, it could be with local manufacturing, which is the, the, the preferred route which we have uh, uh, adopted. But even if you don't do local manufacturing, look at India as a market where you have to bring specific products that will uh, uh, really cater the needs, uh, the specific need of Indian consumers. So what next in your sector, even if it means uh, the kind of uh, collaboration that you intend to have with both the masses, but also the government of India. How do you take that journey together? Well, we are a big 
contributor, our industry and uh, Panorica uh, in particular, we are a big contributor to uh, 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 the, the, the taxes of the state, the tax uh, exchequer. And uh, uh, we continue to have a daily conversation uh, uh, to uh, try and foster the uh, ease of doing business. Uh, they are very open. Honestly, we see uh, improvement uh, uh, every day. So I'm, uh, Policy uh, changes required? This can happen, but uh, it's uh, really about uh, a global element. Again, uh, it's difficult to comment uh, globally because it depends state uh, by state. But yes, uh, improving the, the ease of doing business, allowing us a bit more flexibility in the price increase, as I was mentioning, uh, making sure that uh, uh, we can uh, um, uh, satisfy consumer needs uh, of elevating their consumption is something that is very important for us. Well, thank you so much, Jean Tobol. It has been a pleasure to understand this rising market which has been coming in, in not just alcoholic, but beverage industry, if I must say, right now. And, of course, thrilled to have you here. And hope you uh, enjoy your stay in Delhi and continue to grow and keep going global. Thank you so much. Thank you, Meghna. Thank you.